Calcutta is a chaotic symphony of sound and color. It has twice the population of New York. It's loud, run down, with generations of history written on its walls. Hinduism is practiced in ways I've never seen. Religion and society seem to coexist here in a vibrant mixture of life and culture. This place is uh, important for uh, performing rituals uh, for the ancestors or the, the, the people who were dead in the past. Because my mom and dad, they yeah. think, why do you have an attachment to yeah, your exactly, forefathers? Exactly. And even I don't understand it. Yeah, yeah. As a Hindu, yeah. you have. You have. That's why you came back. And you, you came back to the same place where your great, great Temple Pathia and you know, Lutavan and the Sitil Prasad might have taken bath here. I mean, this is sacred for every Hindu, but of course, the place looks a little ugly. <laughs> you can't say dirty, but you know, it is sacred for the Hindus and as well as the Pandits here. Okay. Okay. See, what he said now, the Pandit has recited mantra for your ancestors and he, recites, he said your name and all your ancestors. I grew up in New York City. In 2002, I graduated from NYU with a degree in film and a desire to know where I came from. You are, you are crazy, very crazy. From the day you started high college, you took a stupid course. Why, why do you say that? You're not glad I'm a filmmaker? No. If you had it your way, what would you like me to be? Something different. Like what? I don't know, accounting, business, medical. I was born in Guyana. My family moved to the United States in the mid-1980s. This makes us twice removed. Dad, do you think I'm crazy? No. That's one of the best fields in the world. Why? In my book, that's the number one field of how I see it. 
because it will bring to people eyes what they never see and they will see it and have an opportunity to analyze it and know the world. When I surrendered my Guyanese passport, I became an American citizen. But does this make me American? I don't look American, and I don't feel Guyanese. I've always been told that India is my family's homeland, but I don't know anything about India. I left for Vietnam because the country is bad. We have to keep vigilante group. People were breaking down houses. And I, I was scared to live there. Jobs weren't there, food wasn't there. A lot of people were living in poverty, so that leads to crime. When we left Guyana, I was too young to understand why my parents and countless other Guyanese would pick up and flee the country of their birth. My family has never been back. There was a town called Wismar when the government then burned down the whole town, killed almost all the Indians, people raped the Indians and displaced them, chased them out from that town. Today, New York City is home to a thriving Indo-Guyanese community. For most of us, India is a long forgotten memory, yet we've preserved our distinct culture and religious traditions. These are the traditions we've brought with us from India, but what did we leave behind? Who did we leave behind? These are the questions I've always wanted answered. I'm told that my Indian ancestors' ship records may be housed in Guyana. This is where my search must begin. Do you miss your sister? Of course I miss my sister. I haven't seen her in about 17 or 18 years. I have lots of families over there that I haven't seen. Lots of them have died. My whole generation is dying over there and I haven't seen them and it's sad. Would you come with me? No. You can still come with me. You can still come with me. No. My mom's gonna come with me. Come with no. me. You haven't seen your sister in 18 years. I don't wanna go. I'm scared. I have a fear of what to that. I don't know how to break that fear. Pat, are you, are you scared that I'm going to Guyana? No. I'm the, Whenever there is a will, there is a way. God will protect you if you, if you if your will is strong. Even if you die a hero, it's better than dying a coward. If you're going for a mission, your mission will be accomplished with God in your mind. And if you have God, He will protect the way. Today, more than 20 million Indians are spread across the world. Many left during the European colonization of India. They went to countries like Malaysia, Singapore, to the far corners of the Pacific, to Fiji, New Zealand, to Australia. Today, Indians are the majority population in Mauritius. They live in Reunion Islands, in South Africa. In more recent years, mass populations have migrated to the Gulf region, settling in Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates. Indians live in the Netherlands, in the United Kingdom. They've made their homes on the opposite end of the world. Canada has a large, vibrant Indian community. The United States is home to over 1.5 million Indians. Large communities of Indians live all over the Caribbean, in Trinidad and Tobago, in Guyana, and countless others. The British used to say that the sun never sets on the British Empire. The sun did set on the British Empire, and the British Empire is no more. But I say that the sun never sets on the Indian diaspora. The Indian diaspora is scattered and spread over the whole world. Come 
much you know about India? Huh? In India? I didn't know nothing about India. I didn't know nothing about India. When you were in school, they teach you about India? Nothing? Nothing. Do you ever want to go to India to find out where your family came from? Can't find out. I can't find me. I have no address. We have nothing. So we can't know which state, which place. Can't find them. And my parents are who? Maybe in India, I'll die out and so on. We don't know them. No, we don't know them. ruled Guyana as recently as 1966. They called it British Guyana. From 1838 to 1920, over 200,000 Indians migrated to British Guyana to supply the labor force on the sugar plantations following the emancipation of black slaves in 1834. When the immigrants came here, true, you find that India had a lot of problems. There were push factors which caused a lot of these people to, um, let us say, offer to come to the new world, to Guyana. Uh, push factors in the sense that um, India as a vast country with uh, overpopulation, with famine, with diseases, with poverty and so on. Some of them expected a, a better way of life. So when they came across the Kalapani, you find that they had to adjust to a new way of life. They had to adjust to a new environment. They have to survive on the plantations. Just imagine the situation in those days. First of all, when they were assigned to the fields, they were given a very unrealistic task, a very hard task, which they had to complete within the day. If they failed to complete the task, they were fined. You had an arbitrary uh, reduction of wages. They were called indentured labor, but the indentured labor was only a euphemism for slave labor. This is the story of the greatest sorrow and tragedy. The story of the Indian diaspora is the story of grit, the story of uh, adventure, the story of tremendous hard work. As a poet in Mauritius wrote once, that they, when they dug, they did not always find gold or silver, but every stone they turned was turned into gold or silver for that country. Sugarcane is Guyana's largest industry. It's the reason black slaves were brought here. It's the reason we were brought here. My dad has worked on these fields. My grandfather has worked here. My great-grandfather has worked here. This is my dad's brother, Buddy. He works for Gaisuko, or Guyana Sugarcane Company. I've asked him to show us around the fields. Who used to own it before the government? Bookery, bookers. Bookers? They were English people. They were good people? Well, if you study history, uh -huh. they're going to tell you whether bookers was good or bad. So when Booker come here and they find out that cane can grow successful, the problem is that the people that were living here, they can fish, they can farm, but they can't, you know, cut and load cane or work in the cane field. So they had to find people from countries that were growing cane, and that was in African India. 
You remember my dad there? Yeah. Your dad used to be a punt checker. How long my dad worked? Okay. He worked uh, not too long. Worked about 10 years. The fight for Guyana's independence saw two main leaders, Dr. Chetty Jagan of the People's Progressive Party and his once comrade and PPP member, Forbes Burnham, who formed his own party, the People's National Congress. During this time, Guyana split along racial lines. The blacks and Indians, who shared a common history, were now bitterly divided. Blacks almost always voted for Burnham and the PNC, and Indians for Jagan and the PPP. Burnham aligned himself with the U.S. and Britain, and following the country gaining independence, he took control of Guyana. He ruled for the next 28 years. During this time, living in Guyana meant living in fear and insecurity. That was a very difficult period in our country. It was characterized by huge economic problems, political repression, and there was this air, air of hopelessness. Just to give you an example, in that period, several things were prohibited, food stuff. So if you, the police found you with, say, bread made from wheat, or roti made from, from wheat and flour, they could lock you up. In fact, they took, locked up a lot of people. So m many people across Guyana became criminals, largely because of what they ate. By the end of the PNC rule in 1992, Guyana was bankrupt and depleted of its human resources with $90 billion in foreign debt. It was the second poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. We left in the 1980s when Guyana hit an all-time low. We were part of one of the largest exodus in history. Regardless of all its flaws, Guyana is still the land my forefathers were brought to. This was their home. Yes. But today I come back to see you because last night I couldn't see oh, you. Oh, you can't see me. Oh, yes, yeah, you. So, Grandmother, tell me, what year were you born? Did it about 19? 19. You born 1919? Yes. Nine, so that's four. That's nine, that's eight. She's 84 years 84 old. Years. You are 84 years old. In her 85th birthday. This is like a palace in compared, compared to what they were used to live before. Why? What she um, she had done program over there. That's so easy. And she wanted to trace. She come in and I have her intention like for young trace where big grandparents and so on come from. Then grandparents, we didn't know where they come from better, but me know me daddy and me mommy are Guyanese, but me grandmother them. Oh, you mama and papa. Uh, yeah, Guyana. Guyana. Yes, but me don't know which place. No, she, she, your mom and dad is from here, but your grandparents. Yes. They're from India. Them da from India. Sital Pasad. I be grandpapa be near Sital Pasad. Uh, well, now me grandfather too. Yes. Yes. Them from and, India. Wow. Um, yes, them come from India. My just tell me. 
What do we have here? This is a proof. She gets so sick at Pasar and date of birth. This is will number five of 1941. In the state of Situl Pasar. You see, they have a uh, uh, This is British Guyana, wow. Yes. <laughs> will number five. This so is probably this can help, you know. Yes. Yeah. Will number five of 1941. You go to the archives. Uh -huh. Immigrant will. All right. She you're getting, you're getting somewhere. Are. I'm getting somewhere. You're getting you somewhere. So maybe this man Sitar Prasad, maybe he was born in India. What do you think? I think so. This man, this man, let it uh, be it be it known that the above name C Sitar Prasad died on the 23rd of January 1940. 1940. He was born in 18 something. Well, 1886. Mm -hmm. It means that that is birthday. Maybe that is birthday. The trip to Burbies was successful. We found the will of Sijal Prasad, my mother's father's father's father, who died November 25th, 1940. Sijal was born in India. I'm hoping this new piece of evidence will take me one step closer to knowing where I come from. With this new information, I again teamed up with Professor Tota Mangar. The British kept detailed records of each ship and every indentured immigrant they brought from India. These records are my only bridge to India. Finding my family's ship records would be the key to our lost history. On this day, we found the records needed to take us back to India. I finally have proof that I'm Indian. More importantly, these records show me exactly where my forefathers migrated from. We found the records of my mother's lineage, Sital Prasad and his parents, Gamani and Dayaratya. They left India in 1886 from Muzaffarpur district in Bihar. They all left from the ports of Calcutta. So these two families were part of a huge, large exodus of migrant labor workers. 2.53 million people who were exported from the port of Calcutta, which is called Garden Rish. We have our address here, eight Garden Rish. We are going to shoot the exact place where they, oh they were given the certificates. It's not your story alone. It's a story of a huge, large migration, which, which has no parallel. Maybe African slavery, of course it is, but it's the huge, largest export of human laborers from India to place. Now, 125 years after you were coming back here. Now we are going to do this. Yeah. The first batch of migrants in 1838, February, two ships, Whitby and Hesperus, left uh, Garden Rish, Calcutta. It was like horrible, horrible, horrible. The state of, uh, the, state of the, li the living condition, working conditions of the uh, people who were taken. It, there was no formal recruitment, but the people were just picked up from here and there, are put in a, on the ship and they go. Every evening, the captain in charge, the invariably white man, they will put a bell, tuck, tuck, tuck. Then everybody has to come on the board and everybody has to dance, I mean, to do some physical exercise. The, you know the number of people killed? Massive riot on the ship. You know the, how many people committed suicide? 
large number. You know, number of ships disappeared. There's no record, no story, nothing. We're talking about sugar, sugar industry, which is oil of 19th century. And the, the people who were controlling sugar cultivation and sugar rum and a whole production of rum and sugar, they were the planter class. They were very powerful. Buildings, these red buildings were the last place that they were, my forefathers and everyone else that left during that period. This is where they were, this is where they were last housed before they got on the ships, the Jahaj, as they called it, and sailed down the Hupi River to never ever return again. These are the last images of India my forefathers would have seen, the last images millions of Indians would have seen before they were packed off and dispersed throughout the entire world for indentured servitude. During the British occupation, India's northeast was under tight British control. Major labor recruitment happened here, in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. This was also the site for many Indian uprisings, including the 1857 Sepoy Mutiny. The economic oppression of colonialism gave the Indians little choice but to accept their role in the new system of slavery. They became indentured servants for the British Empire and were exported to the colonies throughout the world. Madanji, welcome to Mujafarpur. <laughs> welcome, I'm welcome. Here. Another 15 minutes. Another 10, 15 minutes. Why are you covering your head? Foggy, complete foggy. It's foggy? Yeah, it's very cold. Is it cold outside? Yeah, come on outside. This is your ancestral place, girl. You should be like, you should get along with well, but more than any of us. <laughs> this is your place. <laughs> Does that sign say Muzafarpur? It, it's all of it. <gasps> Once upon a time, my forefathers were roaming around this exact place. And I cannot believe I'm here. <laughs> The Musafarpur district was a very important district in, during the East India Company, both for uh, recruitment and for the trade. Mm -hmm. 
And this used to be the violent scene of the nationalist struggle. Two Englishmen, very important Englishmen, were killed here, bombed, and a lot of political, it's politically quite sensitive. You're from Muzaffarpur? Oh, yes. Um, me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my mother. Mm. My mother's father's 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 is Sital Prasad, mm. and he's from Muzaffarpur. Mm -hmm. And he left in the year 1886 mm. to go to Guyana. We go there, mm. and she hasn't seen the relatives, mm -hmm. and they haven't seen her. Mm. So we are going to film that. <laughs> I don't know how I feel. I mean, it's like, it's, this is not a little project that I'm working on anymore by myself. It's a huge project now, and there's armed police officers with guns with us, and a whole convoy of them, not just one or two. And so we're actually going into these villages that are remote and where nothing has changed. And it's just like a huge culture shock, and I, I mean, I'm excited, but it's just a little shocking as well. I'm going to Oh my god. What do I do? What do I do? I don't know. Where do I go? Go, go, go. Suresh. Suresh? What driver can you go? You, you go. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? Gumani Devrati is a baby. Gumani or Devrati, your father was one of the seven brothers. One brother was Gumani. I didn't know what to say. I was telling you, I was telling you, Gumani is a baby. 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 Hi, Namaste. Namaste. Come on. I'm जो भी बोलना मैं इनको हिंदी समझ नहीं आती मैं बता दूँ। मैंने समझ आई चीन ना। एक कुर्सी लाना कुर्सी। क्या बात? दीपा। आर कुर्सी लगा। अरे इन्हें क्या बोलूँ? हमारे 
He is the eldest member here. Which one? This gentleman here. This this man here. Grandfather's grandfather, he remembered the story his grandfather told him about his father's seven brothers. And oh, a no, it does make sense. It does make sense. So his grandfather told him a story about his father. His father. Okay, 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 okay. So he's Tetram's cousin because his grandfather would have been Sital Prasad yeah. and it would have been Sital Prasad's father and his brothers. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's right. So he's cousin. Sita Prasad's father name is Gumani. Right, right, okay. right, right. Gumani is one of the seven brothers. One of the seven brothers. Who, and who, so his grandfather told him about Gumani and his Gumani, seven exactly. brothers. Gumani, he went to America. Gumani is the Dakshin America. जो गन्ने का जो काम है ना गन्ने गन्ने का काम करने के वहाँ वहाँ पे मतलब यहाँ का आवरत और लड़के को लेके गए वहाँ से वो आने चाहते थे भारत में लेकिन आ नहीं पाए तो वहाँ पे सेटल हो गए मतलब वहाँ खर बना के बागाई भादाई पासमान भादाई पासमान भादाई बी आई हाँ बी एच ए डी आई हाँ भादाई भादाई बी एच ए डी आई भादाई 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 पासमान इज लेट्स सी भादाई पासमान शुड बी ऑफ़ योर ग्रैंडफादर्स कंडर कसिन इस कंडर कसिन्स विथ माय ग्रैंडफादर थर्ड कसिन्स ऑफ़ माय ग्रैंडफादर I mean, you know, they, nobody, nobody cares to remember. First of all, it is impossible to remember. They are very busy with their daily, day to day life. Who died, they died. That's it. It's impossible to keep the record. You know? <laughs> so, like, who are, all, who are these women? My relatives. <laughs> it's like overwhelming. I'm just like, there's so many people. And it's just, oh my god, it's a little confusing. What am I supposed to do? They're seeking your blessings by touching your feet. What do I do? You bless them. I bless them. Oh. What, what do I do? Do I get up? Do I? What, I don't know. Namaste. Namaste. I should, I should touch their feet, right? Yeah. You should, uh, namaste. <laughs> Namaste, namaste. <laughs> Mind blowing completely. <laughs> this is the data I found. I went back to Guyana and I found data. I did research and I came back here and I was able to figure out that this is where my family is from. Ancestral family. My ancestral land. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't know. I growing up in New York, I didn't know where my family is from. I didn't know anything, and I wanted to know. It's difficult to see the descendants of my forefathers living in India like this today. Their lives are very different from mine. I have to ask myself, am I glad that my forefathers left? 
have I benefited? Would this be my life had we stayed in India? What is progress? What is decay? How would you define, define progress? Or how would you say, well, this is decaying, you know? Britishers came to our country, they say, well, Indian society is very unprogressive. It's in a state of decline. It's a declining civilization, right? They had their own perception of what, what progress means. They thought that progress would mean introduction of railways in India. Progress would mean introduction of English education in India. Introduction of uh, convent education in India. The villagers said, uh, what these schools are going to teach us, our children? Uh, will these schools teach our children sanskar? They said, no, not really. They said, we are not interested in sending our children to these convent schools. If they are not going to teach our children uh, how to be a good human being, how to be a good you know, person, how to be loyal to their nation, how to be all these things, this education is no good for us. It's quite surreal to be on this land, looking back on my family's journey of survival. I've never considered myself a religious person, Yet here I am, in the center of this most enchanting holy city where Lord Shiva descended. There is something special in this air, something magical. In between touching the feet of my elders and receiving their blessings, something happened to me. to do something I never would have imagined. I wanted to have a puja, a Hindu religious ceremony, on this ground, which my family called home for thousands of years. This is my land. If you're going for a mission, your mission will be accomplished with God in your mind. And if you have God, he will protect the way and make sure your mission is complete and successful. My dad always tells me, that, and he's, because my dad's never stopped me from going to film school or doing whatever it is I wanted to do. And he's always said to me, self-realization is the key to happiness. So you have to do what you want to do always in order to be happy. was the ruins of a home that Sito Prasad must have lived in. So we're going to go to that place today and set up. I'm 
Ja, ja, illegal. Okay. Ja. Ja. I mean, the, the, the police is asking. Police asking. Leave because it's getting you out of control. You have to leave. That's what he says. Ah, nikal, ne? Ja, illegal. Let's do it and move. This is just, this is for the bacha. This is just for the children. Yeah, bacha ke liye. This is just for the children. 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 Just put it on. 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 The eldest lady. सबसे बड़ा फिर आगे लोग इधर हाँ हाँ बाइक चली so come they always uh, treat you like your family members it doesn't matter whether you are or you're not for them you are the family member and they treat you as a guest as a god the kind of tradition you showed them that you wanted to do a puja means for another is not understand indians they come here they spend one or two hours and they went off but you insisted to have puja on the ancestors land puja is, is it's a, a lot mean for indians it means you wanted to join with your roots you wanted to join you wanted to make a relation between two families and they hope to make a relation so you आपको क्या लगे आज का मैंने पहले बता दिया है सारा बात रास्ते में बताई है में मरीन की बातचीत हुई है सारी बात बताई है मोस्ट साइड हमेशा मेरा आशीर्वाद है ना अगेन कम हेयर दोबारा फिर आएंगे एवरीवन टू आई द रिच पुअर डिडेंट मैटर Everyone dies. Yeah, somebody born today, tomorrow he dies. Somebody one year after die, one minute after die, one second after die. Who are born? Anyone, human being, animals. Everyone die one times.
Oh, my God. 